Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Pastor Bob Gray filling in for Callie Ship Gray this morning. I'm hoping that this thing is working. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Let's see. Get to give people time. There's somebody. Good morning, Wendy Spencer Smith. This is, good morning, Susan Cockrell. Phil Morehouse. Darling Jenkins, good morning. Bryn, good morning. Irma. <clears throat> feeling in for Callie this morning. She's not feeling that well. So we're going to get started. Yesterday I had a few technical difficulties because we left Callie's phone on the airplane when we got back in from um, Georgia. Couldn't find it, so we had to use mine, which I didn't know how to do. But today I'm doing better. So we got uh, the phone going, we're gonna, we're gonna get into prayer. Um, start out with Psalm 139 and kind of be thankful and pray, thank God for Psalms 139, what he says about us. Psalms 139, verse 13, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that right full well. For my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be how precious to me are your thoughts O God how vast is the sum of them so I want you let, let's take that word let's take that and make a, a Thanksgiving prayer that uh, first of all we thank you Lord Jesus that nobody was an accident, but they were all foreordained and thought thought of beforehand. And all our days, all of our days were in your book written. What we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to do. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you created our inmost being. And you knit us together in our mother's womb. We took our little spirit that you breathed out and our soul. And you knit us together into the physical world. And I think that word fearfully and wonderfully made means I'm thoughtfully, carefully, uniquely, purposely, beautifully made by you. You took time, you thought about it, you, who, you, who we were supposed to be. And you made us into something wonderful to you that you think about and that you're concerned about. And I think, thank you, Lord, that that realization today is becoming uh, something that brings happiness and joy to our hearts. We were not hidden from you. Our unformed body was already seen by you. So unformed body was seen by him. So I thank you, Lord. So we start out with Thanksgiving that we're, we thank you, Lord, that we're not, not only are we not an accident, we're very valuable to you and that we're precious to you and that you knew us before we ever knew you and that you've created us and already had our whole future in mind. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that, um, uh, or beautifully, wonderfully, thoughtfully, carefully, uniquely, purposely made by you, for you, to be sons and daughters in your kingdom forever, to be sons of the king, daughters of the king. When I use the word sons, I'm, it's more in the sense of authority than I'm talking about male or female. The idea of sonship was to be able to grow somebody up to maturity to take over the family business to help run the family business. Uh, we're to help run the family business for God, which is the kingdom of God. If you look at the book of Revelation, that we're gonna be kings and priests and we're going to rule and reign with him. So he's going to give things for us to look over and be over and do in heaven. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna be bored when you get to heaven. And heaven will come to earth. So that's, you know, we get that all straight in our mind. 
All right, let's, uh, let's begin our prayer with, uh, always begin with clearing out any of the cobwebs of our mind. Always begin with repentance. So we're just going to start with a repentant heart. Lord, we thank you, Father, for first of all, that you love us and care about us. Forgive us where we've not trusted you and not believed in your word. We've not believed in your love for us. Forgive us. Or we've not believed in your goodness, where you said you are a good God. And Father, even we may have experienced things that weren't good, was not your intention. So Father, your intentions, we thank you that we know that your intentions towards us are good and not evil. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us so, that you know the thoughts and plans you have for us are good thoughts, good plans for a good future, a good hope-filled future, to prosper us, not to harm us. So Father, we may have experienced harm, we may have experienced lack, but it wasn't your will. So Lord, help us to believe. Forgive us where we've not believed in your truth and the true reality of who you really are. You are everything that 1 Corinthians 13 says you are. You are love, everything that love is, you are, because God is love. So love is, you are patient, you are kind, you are long-suffering with us. You don't count our wrongs and hold them against us. You are not like um, our friends, you're not like our enemies, you're not like our even the person on their best day doesn't measure up to you. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. Your love never fails us, never becomes obsolete or, or quits believing in us. You believe and hope for the best, always. So Lord, we thank you for who you are. You're generous, giving, merciful, patient, and kind. And Lord, we just uh, ask for forgiveness for where we've not believed that, or where we've lived as if that's not true. Help us to live in faith, live knowing that we're loved, live knowing that you desire us to have good things, good gifts, that you're not just wanting to wait to give us those good things in heaven, but you want us to experience your goodness now. Father, help us to resist the lies of the enemy. Let, let, help us to believe and pray with faith in your goodness and your generosity and your mercy and your forgiveness and you're not holding grudges against us you're not holding our sins against us. You forgive us and you forget forget them again. Never bring them up again. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of those things. Making thank you, Holy Spirit, for making the Word of God become alive in our hearts and minds. Forgive us where we've not surrendered our self life yet in the area of our life that we still hold on to and try to rule and be king of when you are the king of every part. So forgive us, Father, any area of our life today where we've not surrendered our will to your will. Lord, we just uh, repent of that, and we allow you to be king and ruler over everything. What is it you would want us to do today, Lord? That's what we're going to do. We're going to obey you. We're going to, your love language is, is when we obey you and do your will. So, Lord, help us to do what uh, your love language is and in our obedience. So, Lord, help us that in that way. Forgive us where we've not uh, allowed you to be king and lord of our lives. Holy Spirit, we ask also forgive us where we've not allowed you to whisper in our ear and do what you've told us to do. Forgive us where we've not allowed you to have every part of our being so that you can use, uh, we can be used by you to bring about your kingdom. So we ask the Holy Spirit, we just uh, offer ourselves a brand new, like Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service of worship. So we offer our members of our body to you, Lord, the members of our body, our mind, our soul, everything we own. We just offer the Holy Spirit to be uh, where you can infiltrate and use and speak through us and and whatever you want to do through us today. We'll, we may not be a, a, uh, in the gift or the uh, office of evangelist today, but, but you can come on in the spirit of evangelism and help us to speak to others about Jesus today. We may not be uh, operating always in the gift of healing, but you can come on us today in, in any point and somebody needs a healing touch that you can bring healing through us today. Uh, we may not be in the office of a prophet, but Lord, today... 
If somebody needs a word from you, you feel free, Holy Spirit, to speak through us. We're just going to be uh, open and allow you to do what you want. So that's how we're starting our day today with uh, repentance of what we ha haven't done right, but we're of believing for what we're going to do right today. What the Holy Spirit can do through us because we're willing. We just pray in your kingdom come. Your true reality of heaven come to this earth as it is in heaven. Come, first of all, in our hearts and live the reality in my heart and mind of who you are and what you, and what you can do and what we can do in you and who we are in relationship to you. That We just pray that reality would become our reality today. In our heart, in our homes, become the king and we pray your reality becomes our reality in our homes today in our churches we pray your kingdom come and your true reality become our reality in our churches the things that you want done will be done and we're going to pray that in a minute we're going to pray isaiah 61 and uh, we're going to ask god's kingdom to manifest the way god wants it to we pray for your kingdom to come in our and your reality to be become our reality in our town, in our homes, in our families, in our relatives. Your kingdom come, your will be done in, in every state of America and the United States of America. Your kingdom, your come, your will be done in this whole world. The whole world. You care about the whole world and you care about America. And Lord Jesus, we just pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Not anyone else's, but your will, in Jesus' name. Uh, we, we repent for not only our sins, but the sins of our family, Lord, because we can represent them, because we have authority in their life and we have relationships. We just pray not only for our sins, but the sins of our family. For there's none of us righteous, not one. We've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. But we have your righteousness that covers us, but we ask... Father, forgive us where we've messed up, where we've sinned, where we've rebelled, and where we've not believed. And not only us, but our family members and those uh, that we know. In our, we just repent for them and we ask for forgiveness for, and your mercy be upon us and your grace be upon us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, we command all devils and demons and hindering spirits, anything that's not from God, to go from our hearts, our minds, our souls, anywhere that they're trying to lodge in there. We just command them to go in Jesus' name from our homes right now. In Jesus' name, we plead the blood of Jesus' body and blood, oh, the covenant of your blood. We plead that over our homes. So let's get our um, communion while we're talking about that. We'll just put some physical connection to the prayer. Our communion is a very powerful thing. It's not just remembering the death of the Lord till he comes. It's also reinforcing the covenant. Every time we do this, we reinforce the truth of the covenant, which is the blood in the body of Jesus has purchased our forgiveness, our healing, our deliverance, our protection, our um, everything that we don't need, free from anxiety, fear, unbelief, everything that's not from God. He's delivered us from it. He's made us right with God through his body and through his blood. And when we plead the blood of Jesus, this is what we're talking about. We plead that the, the enforcement of the power of the blood of Jesus would become a reality in our lives. Every area that's not in agreement, we just command it to get in agreement. And the, like when the, we're sick, we command our body to be healed because that is what Jesus purchased. When we believe we've sinned and we've repented, but yet there's still some guilt or coming uh, or shameful or guilty in our hearts, we just declare that the word of God says and the blood of Jesus says a different word, that we are forgiven and we're washed clean and we are made right with God because we, the blood of Jesus has been accepted by us. We've repented and we received that blood that Jesus paid for us. So we just thank you, Lord, for your body. We receive our healing that you purchased, our freedom from fear and anxiety today because of the body that you had became our body. We became one with you in your death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. We thank you, Father, we became one with you. 
because you became one with us. Lord, we thank you for your blood that cancels out every curse of the enemy, every lie, that cancels out every sin and washes us and cleanses us and makes us right with God. We thank you for your, your body and your blood. So once again, going back to our prayer, we plead the blood, which means we ask for the enforcement of the reality of your covenant. Would become our reality in our homes, that there would be no sickness among us in Jesus' name. We command sickness to go. No fear, because perfect love casts out fear that we would not be anxious about anything, but we trust you. So we come against the spirit of fear. We come against uh, deception. We come against the bondage of sin and the iniquities that cause us to walk in uh, any kind of bondage to any sin of any kind. No matter what it is, no matter what excuse or name we have or label, we just command that to be broken over our families right now. All deception, all lies, all deceit, all uh, identity problems, people that think there's something that they're not, that God didn't create them to be. We just come against that. We pray for true identity, which is sons and daughters of God. True identity of who we really are in you that would uh, just trump everything else. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we come against all the attacks of the enemy on our family. We plead the blood of covenant as our protective shield, as we trust in you, as we trust in you as our provider, our healer. Lord, every bit of lack doesn't, there's no lack in your kingdom. So we pray that we would experience your true provision. We call, we call your provision in. We call every hindrance be removed. We, we call uh, the bluff of the enemy and declare that your covenant is stronger and better and that we are walking in covenant with you and we're blessed, not cursed. We're blessed. Every curse that comes against us, we close that door through repentance and we command all the curses to be broken over our family and that they would walk in wholeness and health and joy and peace and knowing who they are in Christ, that they, if they don't know Jesus, we pray that Lord, your Holy Spirit would deal with them and break the darkness of their minds, cause them to have receptive hearts and cause them to want to be saved and that they would make that choice, Lord. Help them to make the right choices. Lord, we just pray all, we call all of our family in saved. We call them all into the kingdom. We pray that you would deal with every single one of them. We pray everyone that's tormented by spirits, we break those powers of the spirit right now in Jesus' name. We plead that blood of the covenant once again. We say, uh, the power of the blood is more powerful than any curse of the enemy. And we just claim that thing to be broken, anything working in our families. We just speak over our, our church, that no weapon formed against it shall prosper today. Strengthen our pastors, give them wisdom, help them to know the best decisions. And Lord, help us to be patient with them. If we don't think they're making the right decisions, Lord, we, we trust you will speak to them. And that will give us, help us not to be rebelling against their authority but trusting you with them and they're trusting uh, you with us we just pray the same thing for our spouses our relationships in our home Lord that we would trust you with them more than we trust them that we would trust that you can speak to them and direct them and that uh, we don't know all the answers we just trust you to speak to all of us and direct all of us in the same direction for you have one Holy Spirit and we all can hear the same Holy Spirit speaking the same thing. And so help us to stay in unity and harmony, Lord Jesus. We just speak over our uh, mayors of our towns, that you would speak to them, direct them, that we would be able to live peaceable lives. The Bible says, pray for your leaders that you might live a peaceful life. Lord, we just pray that uh, the, the leadership of our, our counties, our cities, our areas that we live in, and our state, our state leaders, they need wisdom right now. They, they feel pressured to do one thing or another. Many of them not sure what to do. But Lord, I pray that you'd speak to them. Bring wisdom, bring counsel to them. Speak to them in dreams if you need to, whatever way, but help them navigate these times when there's a lots of things going on. And help them, Lord Jesus, uh, to make wise decisions, decisions that will bless people, that will help the situation, not hurt the situation. I pray for our country, America, every state in America, that you would rule and reign. We pray for wisdom and direction and help to our leadership. We pray against those in leadership that did not serve you, did not honor you, did not care about what you think or say. 
We pray that, Lord, they would be removed. We pray that you would put in godly and righteous leadership, that we would do our part by praying and by voting, and that you would cause righteousness to be exalted and sin to be cast down. Any inequity in our government, any inequity in the way it's run, or even the voter system, we just pray that you would work it out, that you would cause it to be um, fair and just. We pray for your holiness and your justice and your righteousness to be exalted in our nation and the world. We pray also, Lord, for those other countries. Where we've sent missionaries to other countries. You care about them as well. And Lord, your righteousness and justice be exalted in all this world. We pray your kingdom come in power and that your glory be revealed and that we be carriers of your presence. Lord, we are the new temple, the living temple, the tent not built with hands. We are your tent to be your to have your glory rest in us and on us and your presence go with us today. We pray that you, wherever we go, we'll be atmosphere changers because where we go, you go. And where we go, your presence goes. We just want to go where you're going. Help us to follow your lead. Follow the Holy Spirit so that you can bless what we're doing and that you can be give us your favor because we are walking in your divine will today. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to read uh, Psalms 130, uh, well, yeah, sorry, Isaiah 61, and we're going to pray Isaiah 61. This is a good prayer because this was the what Jesus stood up in Luke 4.18 and read out of Isaiah, and basically he was saying, this is, this is my platform of what I'm going to do while I'm here. And uh, so this, because it's his platform of what he was going to do and did do, it's also our platform. So we're going to pray this once I read it really quick, and then we're going to pray it. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. What's the good news? Your sins are forgiven. You were separated, but God has brought you near by the blood of Jesus. That's the good news. And now you can have eternal life with him, and you don't have to live condemned. You don't have to live, and you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven. It's your choice, but God's giving you a choice. It's a great choice to make. So he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro proclaim freedom for the captives, the release from the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to pro provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of spirit of heaviness or despair or depression, but instead a garment of praise. So this is what Jesus said I've come to do, and so this is what we've come to do. So we're going to pray right now, Lord, that that be fulfilled as we walk in Christ walks in us today, that you will fulfill this scripture. So we declare today that the spirit of the sovereign Lord Jesus Christ is not only on me but in me, because Jesus uh, is causing me to be anointed, because the anointed one lives within me. The Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to all those who have never heard it, to all those who are poor in spirit and lack what they need. We're going to proclaim to them, this is what you need. You need Jesus. You need a relationship with your Heavenly Father. We're going to proclaim the good news today. And sent me to bind up those who are broken hearted. Jesus is a healer of not physical only, but also emotional healing, also spiritual healing, which is what salvation includes every part. Salvation is a sozo. It's the healing in every area of our life. In the area that's in lack, God will bolster it up. So we declare that today. We, you sent me. Christ in me to bind up the brokenhearted. You sent the Christ in me to proclaim freedom for those who are captive in any kind of way, captive in a bad relationship, captive to uh, habits, captive to strongholds from the enemy, bad ways of thinking, any way of their captive. We just proclaim today that you sent us to proclaim that they, they can be free in Jesus. The release from darkness for those who are imprisoned Many people are walking around living in a prison of this world, a prison of their mind. We just pray, God, today that you help us to cause them to know that there is a way out of their prison and to proclaim it to them and cause them to experience the freedom 
is available through Jesus Christ. To proclaim, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, which is since Jesus came, God's favor has come upon mankind. The angel said, uh, uh, listen, he talks about the goodwill towards men when the angel sang when Jesus was born. Peace on earth, peace between God and man, and goodwill towards men. In other words, God's will is good towards men. He's giving us a time to repent. He's giving us his favor. And favor has to do with the uh, the years of, there's seven, seven years you were supposed to have rest, and then the seven times seven, the 49th year plus the 50, which goes into the 50th year, becomes a year of jubilee, which is everything is returned back that was lost during those years. And so this is where we are. We're, we're proclaiming that the jubilee is for you and that God wants to restore what the enemy has stolen from you. To proclaim the day of the vengeance of our God, where God is our ven avenger, we don't have to take revenge for ourselves. We let God take care of it. We let God make it right. We give it to the Lord. We don't take put our own hand to punish people ourselves, but we let God work it out and judge for himself. And to comfort all those who mourn, <clears throat> and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, and oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So, Lord, we declare today that those who are mourning in ashes, in grief, in pain, emotional, sorrow of heart, Lord, we declare that you will give them beauty for their ashes, that they will get, um, you will multiply uh, your blessing over every area that the enemies attacked in our hearts and minds, and that um, we'll get double for our trouble <laughs> in Jesus' name. So the spirit of heaviness and grief, uh, we, we have to go through the process of grief, but we don't need to stay there. So in the name of Jesus, we command those who are walking in depression, the, their faith and their heart has been uh, wounded. We just pray for healing to those hearts, that you pour in the oil of your joy, that, that they would put on the garment of praise and begin to thank you for who you are, not for what they've experienced, but for who you are, and that you're able to turn everything into something good. You work all things together for good to those who love God or are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28, I think it is. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you are healing them and giving them beauty for their ashes. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Let it become a reality, the true reality of our experience. We don't always experience the true reality of God. So sometimes we interpret our life by our experiences instead of the reality of God. And so we have to do the opposite. We don't interpret, interpret God by our experiences. We interpret our experiences by what we believe about God. That Jesus is love and that he does have a good plan and purpose, but it doesn't always happen. His will is not always done. People choose not to do his will all the time. And it affects our lives. It affects especially people in power and authority. Affect our life by their disobedience or their rebellion against God. But it doesn't reflect on God himself. God is still good. God still wants the best. God still loves justice and righteousness. God still cares about the poor and the needy. God has not changed. He's still generous. We may not have experienced all that. It doesn't change who he is. So, Father, help us not to interpret our uh, you by our experiences, but instead interpret our experiences by who you are in your godly character. You are not uh, a man that you would lie. It, whatever you say about yourself is true, even if we haven't experienced it yet. It doesn't change that you are loving, kind, patient, forgiving, merciful God, and that you are very wise and all-powerful, and you know everything. You have all knowledge. And Lord, we can trust that that is true, whether we have experienced it all or not here on earth. In heaven, whatever uh, God is and says and does is the reality that you experience, and there's no interference. But this is not heaven. This is uh, like um, going through training ground to learn to trust and believe in God without always seeing the reality in our experience, but seeing the reality in our heart, in our mind. That is what faith is. Faith is seeing the reality 
before we actually experience the reality of it. It's a faith is believing in what we um, we uh, know and understand in our spirit, and our spirit revealing to our soul, and our soul uh, believing and expecting that to become our reality in our physical world. So we believe it, we see it in our heart before we experience it in our reality, and that's how faith works. So Lord, we just thank you that you are good, and that you are care about everyone on this broadcast this morning and that you want them all to experience your goodness. But we begin to experience his goodness by believing in it first. So Lord, we trust you. We, we expect good things from you today. We expect that you're gonna provide for us. We expect you're gonna take sickness from our body right now in Jesus' name. We command sickness to go. We expect your healing, your strength, your grace to be upon us to do whatever we've called, you've called us to do today. We expect your goodness. Because we expect it and because we really believe it, we will experience your goodness today. We will experience your provision. We will experience healing in our bodies. We will experience newfound strength. We will experience your guidance and your wisdom being downloaded to our hearts and minds and making good decisions. We thank you, Lord, because we believe and we expect we will see what we believe. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone that's been here today. We pray that they continue to pray for every area that you lead them to pray for. These um, mothers of Zion, that they would pray for their areas of influence, every area that uh, in America that the women of God will come together in unity and harmony and their assignment be fulfilled, nothing stopping them, nothing missing, nothing broken, complete shalom today in Jesus' name. So keep praying for Pally. She, Callie, she doesn't feel well today. Just as for those who just came on later, we lost her phone at, in the airlines um, Monday, so we weren't able to do the broadcast. We had some, we had some um, Tuesday. We had some technical issues, me not knowing how to use my phone to do it, but today we got it working. So we ask uh, that you pray for um, those that you know are in need today, not just Callie, but all. You pray for your pastors, pray for your friends, pray for your family, pray for your church, pray for your nation, <clears throat> pray for the women of America. Just keep praying. God is working because we're praying. God just needs somebody on earth to agree with what he wants done. And we, uh, because he's placed us here and given us his name and authority, when we pray, God is working. <clears throat> Going back to about what I was saying earlier, because we haven't experienced every prayer being answered immediately, we could say that God doesn't answer prayer, but that's not true. <clears throat> Our experiences are not what teaches us about God. The truth is when we pray, God hears and God moves and God begins to work. And we continue in prayer, God continues to work. And the outcome is God's will being done. So Lord, we thank you that our prayers do count and that we're gonna keep praying and we're gonna to pray together, which is even more powerful. Because if one can put a thousand to fight, two can put 10,000 enemies to fight, what can we do with our group praying together? So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's power in prayer and that you are that power. But we agree, there's power in agreement. And there's, we thank you that your word never comes back empty or void, but always accomplishes everything that you sent it for. In this whole earth, you sent the, your word to heal them. So we declare your word is healing us today. We declare that your truth, your word and your truth is becoming our true reality. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Keep praying, ladies. We'll see you tomorrow.